Hello, welcome to New Harvest Christian Fellowship, Manchester, England, and thank you for subscribing to our sermon podcast. The message you're about to hear was recorded live at one of our recent services. We pray it will be a blessing to your life, and if you'd like to get in touch with us, we'll give you our contact information at the end of the recording. Thank you once again. Enjoy the preaching. And uh, you know, as Brother Lily says, you sound... You sound good this morning. You're in good, good voice, amen. And we're all excited to hear the Word of God. Um, this morning, I want you to open your Bibles with me to 2 Kings. 2 Kings, and we're going to read from chapter 22 and verse 8 through to 11. 2 Kings 22. We have been ministered to this few days, I I would say a week, but it's only a few days, but it's amazing how much we have received and God has spoken into our lives and it it really is a blessing and I'm I'm truly blessed and um, privileged to be a part of sharing the gospel, the the word of God with you this morning. In 2 Kings chapter 22 and verse 8, the word of God says, then Hilkiah, the high priest, said to Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. So Shaphan then, uh, Shaphan the scribe, went to the king, bringing, uh, bringing the king word, saying, Your servant have gathered the money that was found in the house, and have delivered it into the hands of those who do the work. Who oversees the house of the Lord? Then Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. Now it happened when the king heard the words of the book of the law that he tore his clothes. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you this morning for bringing us here once again that we can hear your word. I pray, God, that right now we would be very much aware of your presence, that you are here with us and you are about to minister in our lives as you have been this week, Lord. You would continue to minister in our hearts and in our lives. Cause us to do your will in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to speak to you this morning. The message I've entitled is Finding the Lost Treasure. Finding the Lost Treasure. And I don't know about you, but there's some excitement when you find something that you have lost. A few weeks ago, I was going through some papers and sorting out a a drawer that was on the desk. And I said to my wife, hey... uh, this 25 pounds here, is that, did you put that? You know, this has been, and she says, wow, it's an old five pound as well. It's been there a long time. So we were like, wow, excited, 25 quid, just lying there. You know, and uh, we were excited just to find something that we had lost. And there's times in our lives when we lose things, And praise God when we find it. Amen. And and you know what happened is that Hilkiah said to Shaphan, he says, you know what? I found the book of the law. I found it. I found something. Something exciting. This book looks good. And he was excited about that. I want to just go back into verse, into chapter 21. And in, in chapter 21, I just want to give you an overview of the, the story. And in, in chapter 21, Manasseh was reigning as king. And the word of God says that he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He built altars to Baal. He built altars in the house of the Lord to worship false gods. He burnt his son as a sacrifice to a false god, as it were. He was actually involved in witchcraft. He was doing all these these things that was evil in the sight of the Lord. He was that, it was so bad that God was angry with him. 
And with all that was taking place, God was angry with the state of the nation at that time. And somehow you, you, what happened was eventually he just carried on doing all these evil things, but eventually he died. And then his son, Amon, became king. And he wasn't much better either. Amon became king and he started doing very much the same and carried on just like his dad. He was doing all the evil things that his dad did. He was still worshiping false god. He was still involved in witchcraft. He was doing all these things that were evil in the sight of God. And eventually... Well, actually, he didn't even reign long. He only reigned for two years. And what happened was that his servant assassinated him. His servant thought, you know what? We're going to get rid of this guy. (laughs) And they got rid of him. And then his son became king. Josiah became king. And Josiah was only eight years old when he became king. And can you imagine being put in such a responsibility at eight years old? He was, a, he was just a boy. He was six years old when his dad became king. And he probably just, just had a two years experience of seeing his dad being a king. And then all of a sudden he was thrown the mantle as it were and he was now the king. Josiah was raised in a bad home. He was in a royal home, but it wasn't a good home. It wasn't a good, uh, you know, he didn't have any good examples as it were. But that didn't cause him to have a victim mentality. How many know that we can have that victim mentality? Well, it's because of the home that I was brought up in. And I'm this way because my dad was like that. Well, if you know your dad was bad, don't be bad. It's it's just common sense, isn't it? You actually know, you know, it's my dad. He He was terrible. And that's why I'm like this. Come on. Give me a break. Change. It says Josiah... Reigned for 31 years in Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. And walked in all the ways of his father, David. Now notice that it says David was his father. Now David wasn't his biological father. His biological father was a- Amon. And, uh, but here I think what happened is, you know, here with Josiah, Josiah saw David as a role model. And he says, you know what, my, my father went the wrong way. My father did what was wrong in the sight of God. And I, I'm not going to go that way. I'm going to follow a better role model. And what kind of role models do you and I have this morning? In verse 4, we see Josiah told Shaphan, he says, you know what, I want you to go and rebuild and help to rebuild the house of the Lord. I want you to go down and start rebuilding, get, go distribute the money, give it to all the people that needs to, to, to do the work of God and just get involved and make sure that the work is done. And what happened was that he stepped out and he started doing something For God, he he changed the path that he was going down. He changed the path that his family, his grandfather, his father was going. And he says, you know what? They they build all these altars. We're going to tear down these altars. You know, they're worshiping these false gods. We're going to stop worshiping these false gods. We're going to worship the true and living God. And what happened was that he says, we need to get back on track. We need to be on the right track. He didn't sort of live in the past and with all the things that had taken place in his life. 
You don't have to be just like your dad. Or you don't have to be bound by the past. You know, I treat my past and the devil just as like I treat my rubbish. I do. You know, when I throw my rubbish out, the bin men come on a Tuesday. And you can hear them clanging out there and doing all sorts. But I don't go running after them and saying, bring it back. I just want to check there's something I might have left there. It's gone. Goodbye, devil. So long. I'm going with my Lord where I belong. I'm not going after the bin man and saying, please stop. I want to go through the rubbish. There might be some things there that I still need. No, it's rubbish. It's out. It's gone. Goodbye. So long. The past is the past. Leave it behind and move forward. And for Josiah, he said, you know what? I'm going to go forward. I'm not going to go backwards. I'm going to keep moving forward. And he says, you know what? We're going to destroy all these things that my father had built. I'm going to change the role, all the things that dad had done. He says, you know what? I'm not going to go that way. I was looking at treasures and different things. And I remembered as a young boy, Pastor Tom was talking about being back at school. And I remember being back at school. And what happened was with, we, we went to a history class. And I grew up in Jamaica. And in, in Jamaica, Jamaica was actually taken over by England. Then the, the Spanish took over. They threw, threw them out. And then the English came back. And threw them out. And it was just like that for quite a while. And part of the Jamaican history was that when the Spanish was there, is that um, when they had valuables, as it were, what they would do is that they would have what you call a Spaniard jar. And they would put their valuables in there and they would bury it. So I was in this history class and somehow teacher was saying, you know, the they, they buried all these Spaniard jars and people were finding all these things and finding these Spaniard jars and there were valuables in there. So my ears sort of went up, you know. I'm like, ooh, the Spaniard jars. I must find me a Spaniard jar. I got to find the Spaniard jar. So I'm all excited and, you know, through my school life, I'm like looking around for Spanya jar. I wonder if there's a Spanya jar over there. And, you know, you'd be probably, you know, digging just to see, is there a Spanya jar? And I'm always looking outside to say, I never found a Spanya jar. <laughs> but what happened is that I, I was interested in finding treasures. Well, let me say this morning, I found one. I found a treasure. I found a treasure. I want to show you the treasure that I found. I found the treasure. The Word of God is the greatest treasure that you and I could ever find. The Word of God is the greatest treasure that you and I can have. And I found it. I found it. I remember as a new convert being very, you know, just the Word of God was just a part of my life. I wanted every every bit of it. I was just so, you know, enthralled with the Word of God. I wanted more and more of the Word of God. I would, you know, there was, it was my treasure. It was, it was everything to me. There was, uh, you know, you would go through and color all bits, highlight verses, and you would go through... I'm sorry, we can't do that on a tablet. Well, we can do it on a tablet, but, you know, it's not as much as you could. And I would go through and I would color and I would highlight and you would go through the Word of God. It was my treasure. But, you know, there was times when I lost the treasure. I simply lost that treasure. And what happened was that I had to go and dig it out again. I had to find it once again, the treasure that had been lost. 
And sometimes you and I can lose that treasure. I remember, as I said, as a new convert, Pastor Jonathan and I would go to the bookstore, the Christian world, and I, I forgot the other one, they, Wesley Owen, hallelujah. People, you know that. And I remember going into Wesley Owen, and the, the, I, I believe that was the one where you could go downstairs and Inside, there was, uh, Pastor Allen knows, uh, and you could go inside. And I remember there was times me and Pastor Jonathan went in, and, 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 and the lady would, or the, the guy that was there, would let us go into the back room. In the back room, it said like there were boxes that had just arrived, and uh, you know, they hadn't opened those secondhand books yet. And uh, we would go in, and we would be in there for a, a little while. <laughs> And Dorothy and um, Stephanie would be there with the babies saying, how long are you guys going to be in there? <laughs> and we were like, we'll be just, we will be a few minutes. Just give us a couple more minutes. And then they would come back again knocking on the door and the babies would be crying. And they'd say, oh, the babies need changing. They're wet. They've got, we've got to just do, get out. And we said, well, you know, can you guys go change the babies and we, we, we'll be out in a little while. But we were there for ages. <laughs> we were there and we were searching for treasure. The Word of God was a treasure. And we were searching and searching. This morning, if you want the unlimited power of God, then you need to find the treasure. If you want the unlimited power, find the treasure. And when you find the treasure, don't lose the treasure. And if you've lost the treasure, find it again. Because we need that treasure. We need the word of God as our treasure this morning. The unlimited treasure. We understood something as young men. We understood that... Dirty Bibles only lead to dirty lives. Psalm 119 and verse 9 says, How can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed according to your word. By taking heed to the word of God. D.L. Moody says that the Bible will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from the Bible. My wife always says that to our kids, you know, sin will keep you from the Bible. And it does, doesn't it? it when you and I, when we, when we sin, we don't, we don't want to touch the Bible, do we? We're like, oh man, that's the last place we want to visit when you're in sin because you know that the Bible is going to expose sin and it's going to start showing you exactly where you're at. In Job chapter 23 and verse 12, Job said that he treasured the word of God more than food. Oh, I, I went last night to the um, Caribbean flavors. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, it's like, wow, this is good food. But you know what? For Job, he treasured the word of God more than food. The last couple of weeks, God has been dealing with me, and I started, you know, my lunch breaks, I just wanted to read more and just get into the word of God. And my wife says to me, Dave, what have you took for lunch today? And I said, well, my Bible. <laughs> and she says, well, so what did you eat? I says, well... I just wanted to spend my breaks and just spend it and just give it to God and allow God to minister to me, allow God to speak into my life. It's actually treasuring the Word of God more than food. And I love my food. <laughs> you should have said, no, Pastor, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. I really couldn't. <laughs> but what happened is that we... We treasure sometimes food more than the Word of God. You know why I know that? Because when we have 
food on a church, there's more people at church. <laughs> when we don't have food on, there's less people. But when it's announced, man, there's going to be food, the church is full. So what do we treasure more? I'll leave that with you. Amen. <laughs> we need to be all-you-can-eat Christians. All-you-can-eat. All-you-can-eat. We love those all-you-can-eat places where we can go and we just pig out as it were. But you know what happens? We need to pig out on the Word of God. We need to pig out on the Word of God. Really dig in, tuck in, and allow God to minister in our lives. Amen. Job not only loved the Word of God and treasured it, but he obeyed it. We need to hide the treasure in our hearts. Also, Josiah... He got back into, the, into, the, into God's word. And I think that's a place that you and I need to be. In 2 Chronicles chapter 30, 34 and verse 3, it says, For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father David. He was like, man, I want God. I want God. And he would seek after God. I wonder how much are we seeking after God this morning? He was going in a different direction to how his father was going. He was going, he says, no, I'm, I'm, you know, not only am I going to go in a different direction, but he says, the nation that I am, you know, he says, I'm king over, I'm going to make sure that they go in the same, that they go in the right direction. It's very important this morning that you and I, would make sure we're on the right track. And Josiah got rid of the idols that, he, he, that was there. He got rid of the golden image. And not only did he, but you know what? He stood up and he made a covenant before the Lord. In verse 23, he stood up and he stood by a post and he made a covenant before God. And he said, you know what, I'm going to be obedient to your word. I'm going to do your will. And not only did he make that covenant, but the people of God also, all the people stood with him and said, yes, we're going to also live according to the covenant that you've made. You see, what happens when you and I make a stand for God, and when people see it, they will want to follow also. They will say, yes, I want to go the way he's going. I want to go the way she is going. Their lives are different. They're not the same. They said, look, we've been going the wrong way. I, I wonder some, you know, we need to have that inward look and see where we're going. I want the power of God this morning in my life. And if you and I want the power of God, then we're going to have to go in the right direction. They made that commitment to God. We're going to walk your way. The people and the king, not just the king, but they all, they, they were obedient to God. They got rid of the idols. They got rid of the witchcraft. And they started walking in the way that God wanted them to walk. You see what happens is that you can grow up in a godly home and still be ungodly. You, you can grow up in a home where, you know, you hear the word of God every day. You see, you know, you're a minister. You, all, you, know, you know everything about the things of God. But yet still you can be ungodly. But you can also grow up in an ungodly home and God Almighty can touch your life and He can transform you and you can live for Him and do His will. So it's not down to, oh, well, you know, it's because of where I, how I, the family I grew up in. No. If we allow God to minister in our lives, He will. If we allow Him, He will. But oftentimes we can just, well, I, we know everything. I've been to church so often. 
I, I, know, I, I know the Bible, I know everything, but what happens is that we don't apply it. Apply it to our lives. Josiah wanted to rebuild the house of God. He wanted the people of God to start getting into the Word of God and knowing God and, and, and following and obeying the laws of the Lord. This morning, that needs to be the very same with, our, with us. You know, really, Josiah should have been a failure. He should have been a failure when you look at the, the family that he grew up in and what had taken place. And his dad died when he was two years old. Sorry, when he was six years old. And just seeing all these... I'm getting my dates wrong now. He was eight years old, yes. And what happened was that you can imagine that taking place to an eight-year-old child. That's enough to qualify him for counsel for, you know, probably half of his life. Because there's many people that have gone through things and they're, you know, I, I just can't deal with it. I need counseling. And they're there for years. They're, they, they're seeking counseling. But for Josiah, it was different. And the only difference was that he sought the Lord. The difference was that God was with him and God was helping him. God was ministering in his life. That's the difference. God makes the difference. The unlimited power is there and God is able to minister in your life. Josiah should have been no good to himself or anyone. Just like his father before and his grandfather, he could have walked in the same way. He could have been doing the same things. And you know what? His life could have been all messed up. He could have had this victim mentality. You know what? This is how I, it's going to be. This is my life. But this young boy found a way out. He rised above his circumstances. I preached a message years ago, Pastor Tom reminded me of, you know, that we need to rise above our circumstances. We need to fly like an eagle above it. Say, oh man, look at that down there. But I'm not getting involved, amen. <laughs> the circumstance is bad down there. But you know what? I'm going to fly like an eagle. I'm going to be up in the sky and I'm just going to look down on those situations. And what happened was that Josiah rised above those circumstances, those situations that were bad in his life. Another thing is that we need finding what seems lost. And in the house of God, they, they, they had lost the word of God. They'd lost it. It wasn't there. There were idols where the Bible should be. There was all kinds of different things going on where the Word of God should be. And it's finding what seems lost. Have you lost it this morning? Have you lost it? Because you need to find it. You need to find it. The struggles that we go through sometimes, you know, uh, it's because we've lost it. The things that we're going through many times is we've lost it. In verse 8 of our text, it says, Then Hilkiah, the high priest, said to Shaphan, uh, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. It wasn't outside. It wasn't anywhere else. It was in the house of the Lord. But he found it. It was there. It was where it should be. It, but you know what happened was that nobody, was, nobody had, had seen it. It was covered in dust. It was buried. It was, it was, they, they weren't having it as it were. They weren't using the, the word of God it was, or the law. It was just there. It was, but he says, I found it. If we want God unlimited power this morning, please find, find it. 
The Word of God is living, it's powerful, it's sharp. It can change your life, it can transform you. The Word of God is true. You and I need that. We need it within our lives. We can't do without the Word of God. It is our guide, it's our strength, it's our help. We need to find the tr we need to find it. We cannot afford to lose it and just give up. Have you ever been searching for something and you say, "Man, I give up. I can't be bothered. I've been looking long enough." And for some people they just look, oh, "I can't find it." <laughs> Have you looked? Oh, oh I, my, I, my, I, my children, I know, I know. I can't find it. Well, did you look? Did you really look? Oh, well, I just, I can't find it. I look. Did you pick anything up? Oh, there it is. Maybe if you just moved something, you would see it. But you know, it's like, they're not looking. And what happened is that if you really want to find it, you have to look for it. We need to find the treasure that we have lost. We need to find it. If things are going wrong in your life, find the book. If husbands and wives are having problems, find the book. If children are, you know, go out of control, find the book. If you're about to lose your job, find the book. If you've been unemployed for too long, find the book. If you don't have peace in your heart and in your life, then find the book. If you're hurting, if you're broken, find the book. If you're lonely, if you're lost, find the book. Because when you find the book, that will transform your life. You just can't get on with others, then find the book. Find the book. You've lost your joy, then find the book. You have a bad report from the doctor, find the book. Your family member is going to court, find the book. Find the book. You're sick in your body, you're tormented by the devil, find the book. Say, devil, I'm not going to allow you to torment me anymore because I've got the book. I've got the book, and the book is going to give you that un unlimited power. You, we want that. Find the book. Can't sleep at night. Find the book. Just can't see your way through the situation and through all that you're going through. Then we need to find the book. Oh, it's my treasure. I bought this one about 20 odd years ago. Yeah, in that Christian bookshop. <laughs> As we were scanning through all the books. I got this one. You know what happened is it's not just good enough to have the book. But when you find the book, read the book. <laughs> read the book. It says when Hilkiah found the book, he passed it on to Shaphan. He passed it on to someone else. We need to pass it on. I remember going to Russia many years ago, and this was when the, the, you know, the pastors had just been going in earlier. And, and when we went there, it was like we, we took Bibles, and, uh, and the different pastors were taking Bibles in. And when you, you took it, uh, people would get the Bible, 
and they would read it and they would come back a couple of days later and they would say, thank you very much. I read it. It's a good book. Give it to someone else. And they felt like, you know what? It was enough. Just, it was good to, to read it, but they wanted someone else also to have this book. They also wanted, and you know, for Shafan, he said, hey, you know what? Uh, this book looks good. I'm going to take it to the king. I'm taking it to the king. And he, he goes to the king and he, he starts reading the book to the king. And uh, what happened was that when the king heard the words, the word of God says he ripped his clothes or he rent his clothes. It touched his heart. He touched his heart. He read the book to him. Have you read the book to anyone? Have you passed the book on to anyone? Because what happened is that if you want God's unlimited power, not just in your lives, but in other people's lives, then you're going to have to pass the book on. You're going to have to pass the book on. And for them, they were, you know, for, 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 for the king, the king was like, wow, this, this book is good. Why haven't we been obeying this? Why haven't we been looking at these scriptures? Wow, we've lost it. We haven't been there. Wow, we need to obey this. Wow. Gosh, there's life there. There's so much going on in here. We've been missing out. Let me say, if you've lost the book, You're missing out. We need to find that book. When you find it, don't lose it. Don't lose it. People died for this. People died for this. It makes me think there's blood been shed for this book. We know that. Jesus Christ, he shed his blood for us. But not only that, there's men that have shed their blood for this book. Shouldn't we treasure it? Shouldn't we treasure the word of God? Shouldn't we allow it to minister in our hearts and in our lives and transform us? This morning, I want to encourage you that you and I would find the book and allow it to minister in your heart and in your life. You can't lose it. If you want the unlimited power of God, hold on to this. Hold on to it. Allow God to minister in your life. That's all I have for you this morning. Let's give God praise. If you've been blessed or challenged by today's preaching and you'd like to get in touch with us, the easiest way is via our website at www.newharvestuk.com. You can email us at info at newharvestuk.com or look us up on Facebook or Twitter. You can call us on 0161 278 6305 or you can even write to us at 194 Chapel Street, Salford, Manchester, M3 6BY. We'd also like to extend a warm welcome for you to join us at any of our services. However you might be feeling, and whatever you might have been told, know this. God loves you, and there's a place for you in his kingdom. God bless you, we're praying for you, and once again, thank you for listening.